Let's talk about some of the modern conditioners. What does that mean to the environment? A lot of times people ask, why do you have so many conditioners in your line? Like, how could you, like, why? Well, when it comes to conditioners in our line, we really try to have a different or a unique ball motion we're looking at. We, not, we don't try to just release a conditioner just to have a new conditioner. We really, if it doesn't differentiate itself within the line, and it doesn't even have to be more durable or less transition-y, but it has to be unique, maybe friction-wise, maybe ball motion-wise, something within there that does that. So when we look at our line, we're really trying to differentiate to match up a conditioner, maybe for a specific environment. As much as we like our, our line and conditioners, that can work everywhere, and they might work in every condition, but one might really excel. That's why we have different ones within our line to really try to match every type of environment you know, we possibly can. But what's unique is the element series. It's the first series of conditioners that are what we would consider blendable or uh, used together to create a specific ball motion. When we came out with the Flex in 2013, at the first time ever, we had the ability with this machine to have two tanks and two pumps. So we could run a different combination of different conditioners to get a different ball motion or a durability in a different part of the lane. Something that you can't just grab two conditioners, pour them in a jug, and hope they don't separate or hope they don't, you know, come apart. You really want those unique characteristics on the lane to do what you want it to do. Some conditioners really bond and, and like the surface. Others really bond well and like the bowling ball. So if you can adapt two to one like the lane and one like the ball and kind of, I don't want to say fight each other, but kind of work off each other, you've got a scenario that works very well. So the Element Series, we were really excited when the Flex came out to be able to open up some different doors and do some different things that other other lane machines on the market couldn't do. One of our most popular, at the time we came out with that, we released, uh, at the time, Fire and Ice. And Fire was is one of our more popular uh, element conditioners being used. It's a good, what we would consider tournament play, league play. It's got a little bit higher friction, meaning the ball will pick up in the oil a little bit sooner than maybe some of the other ones where you might think of slickness, where you want, you know, a surface, maybe a high friction surface to have a slick conditioner. We're starting to see that trend change a little, where a higher friction a conditioner on a higher friction surface works well. Again, it's about blending out the ball motion and taking away some of that over, under, or unpredictable ball motion because the ball doesn't pick up the conditioner in the right part of the lane. So fire is what we would consider a, a little bit good base, if you will, for our Element Series, but also very good. What's important to remember about the Element Series, too, is each element has its own unique characteristic that's very good on its own. But as you'll see, when we start to put them all together, it creates ball motion and different friction on the lane that you can't get in a single type style conditioner. With fire was ice. Ice by far would be considered our slickest conditioner or less frictiony conditioner in the line. Um, it's very popular. We've used it for a lot of tournaments. It's still one of our most popular one for tournaments. Uh, it's very durable, but it is a little bit slick. So when I talk about recreational patterns, typically ice wouldn't be one of my more recommended, recommended ones simply because it might be a little too touchy when it comes with the slickness of that. But always remember, if your bowlers are used to a specific ball motion and slickness, and you go to a high friction conditioner, you're gonna have some, some change there that your bowlers might not like. So always be careful when you're looking at what your, your steps might be just by changing that. Well, we had a lot of people that loved fire, and then, well, ice. And, Maybe using it in a single application, fire might have been too frictiony, maybe ice was too slick. Current really sat right in the middle between the two. Gave us a very good ball motion that didn't pick up too soon, but wasn't too slick. So it was really kind of a nice middle ground, if you will, 
within the original element series. And then, really, uh, what we would consider uh, a unique, very different conditioner to the bowling industry was terrain. And we released terrain a little bit before Bowl Expo. Really, Bowl Expo was kind of its launch. But we had had the element that we had been using, you know, prior to that to really kind of see the uniqueness. It's by far the highest viscosity uh, conditioner we've ever had. Again, high friction isn't bad for your bowlers today, even if you have a high friction. Again, predictable ball motion is your key. Blending out the over, under, wet, dry ball motion, especially for your average bowler, is very, very important. What makes terrain unique is it's the first what we consider, not consider, but it is a non-Newtonian uh, chemical, where all other conditioners pre-terrain were what we considered Newtonian. And the best way to describe that is terrain, the viscosity and the way the ball shears through it actually adapts differently to different styles. Number one question we get asked, I kind of touched on it, but how do I get one pattern for all my bowlers? Because if I put too much outside, I lose the my high rev players in the middle. Or if I put a puddle in the middle, my straighter players get in and they can't hook the ball. And it's too dry to play out. Well, by using a higher friction conditioner, we can now, and the way it adapts in the viscosity and how the bowler sees it, we can put more on the lane wider and create more angles. So a higher rev rate player might see it shear through there at a lower viscosity. So they get that freer push, but still has the friction to get around the corner and read, read the mid lane properly. Where your straighter players now be all and still have the ball pick up soon enough and have enough energy to get through the pocket. And at the end of the day, people ask, I need the pattern. I can't carry corner pins. Well, again, it's about having the right front to back and the right ball motion, and more importantly, the right amount of energy, not too much or not too little, and the ball to get through the pins. If the ball gets through the pins properly from multiple angles, you're going to make a lot of different styles and a lot of different bowlers very, very happy. But again, talk about non-Newtonian. I'm a little chubby, so I tend to eat french fries probably more often than I should, but ketchup. Well, if you've ever had a ketchup bottle and you start hitting it and it won't come out and you start really putting force to the bottle, it becomes a liquid and now it comes out of the bottle and on your plate. Once it sits there, it kind of solidifies again and kind of comes back to its state. That's really what terrain sees. It's the first. So if I'm a higher rev rate player, my ball gets through there, shears nice, it gets to the spot. But if my maybe up the back of the ball a little bit, tends to be a little slower with the ball speed, less rev rate, I'm still going to allow the ball to pick up. So my higher rev rate players, the ball doesn't pick up early, but the ball does pick up for some of your straighter players. So it is a very unique conditioner that we think um, Prodigy was our uh, still our uh, number one conditioner seller around the world. Why? Because it works in a lot of environments, and it's a friendly, easy conditioner to use. Terrain really has become that prodigy. We've had a lot of comments that, hey, man, this is like the new prodigy. Um, I personally think it's one of the best conditioners we've come out with that really is that A to Z. It works in all sorts of environments. Yes, you might have to adapt a little and do that, but you typically would do that with any conditioner change. But it allows you to do a lot of different things, and it's very unique. Again, most importantly, we can go longer, wider, without creating issues for all you mechanics, because I know at the end of the day, we don't want to be chasing ball calls out of ranges all night. Here's just kind of a graph. If we put it out there for you to see, you can see, again, on the slick, high slick side, we're looking at the ice all the way to terrain, which is what we would consider highest friction, and then somewhere with fire and current. By changing how we blend all these together, we can completely create a different ball motion within the same pattern. 